Today we're going to talk about strategies to prepare for the CASPER test. You're a hardworking pre-med student with competitive stats, impressive extracurriculars, and a well-balanced medical school list. As you prepare to apply to your dream schools, you realize a few of them require the CASPER test for admission. It's different than anything you've faced before. The MCAT, you handled. Now this? How can you study for it? What are the best strategies to impress adcoms and earn your white coat? If you're feeling intimidated by the CASPER test, you're not alone. Fortunately, we're here to help. I'm Dr. Shirak Shemasian, medical school admissions expert at Shemasian Academic Consulting. In this video, we'll discuss why some schools require the CASPER test and how adcoms evaluate your scores. Most importantly, we'll give you three unique sample CASPER scenarios for you to practice on. To get the most out of this video, make sure you're sitting down, able to type, taking your time, and giving us your full attention. We'll have you pause the video after each scenario to answer the practice questions, then we'll compare responses. This type of preparation is the best way to help you excel in the CASPER and increase your chances of getting accepted to medical school. What is the CASPER test? CASPER stands for Computer-Based Assessment for Sampling Personal Characteristics and was developed at McMaster University in Canada. Its main purpose is to assess qualities like professionalism, ethics, communication, and empathy, all important traits for a successful physician to have. Traditional med school application components like your personal statement, secondaries, letters of rec, and admissions interview aren't effective at measuring those four traits. So the CASPER is used to offer adcoms a more reliable assessment of their applicants' personal qualities. You're probably wondering, which medical schools require CASPER? Currently, over 45 allopathic and 12 osteopathic med schools do, including prestigious schools like Baylor, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and the University of Washington. We've included the entire list in our supplementary guide, How to Prepare for the CASPER Test. There's a link in the description box below. When and where should I take the CASPER test? CASPER is offered at least once a month. You enroll online and the test fee is $12 for US students with an additional $12 charge for each school you send your results to. You can take the CASPER test on any computer with internet access. Just be sure you have a quiet, distraction-free environment so you can focus. Since some med schools want your CASPER scores before they review your application, we suggest you take the CASPER in April or May of your application year, ideally before you submit MCAS. Med schools will receive your results within three weeks of your test date. To make sure you're on the right track to submit all your medical school applications and give yourself the best chances of getting in, check out our related guide that explains the ideal medical school application timeline. There's a link in the description to that as well. What is the format of the CASPER test? CASPER takes about 90 minutes to complete you'll complete 12 different sections. Eight include video-based scenarios and four include word-based scenarios. For each scenario, you'll be given three open-ended questions to answer and five minutes to answer them. You'll see what we mean when we get to practice scenarios in a minute. Be aware that most questions won't be related to medicine, so your medical or scientific knowledge won't come in handy here. Instead, competence in the areas of professionalism, ethics, communication, and empathy is what will help you excel. How is the CASPER test scored? Each of the 12 sections is scored by a different rater. This helps level the playing field since some raters might be more strict than others. In other words, you can rest assured that you won't have an overly hard rater scoring your entire test. The raters give each section a single numerical score from one to nine, with nine being the best score. And what are the raters scoring? Don't worry, they're trained not to focus on your spelling and grammar. After all, you only have five minutes for each scenario to type out your responses. You don't have time to decide if you should be using whoever or whomever. Instead, the raters score the content of your answer. How are you displaying professionalism, ethics, communication, and empathy in your responses? That's what they wanna know. You might be feeling nervous about answering three questions within five minutes, and it makes sense because the time flies perhaps even faster than you expect. The good thing is the rater considers the entire section as a whole, not each individual question. So if you write a strong response to the first question but don't have enough time to address the next two questions in depth, you could still get a high score for the section provided your first answer demonstrates professionalism, maturity, and an understanding of the important ethical issues at hand. Should I study for the CASPER test? 
Situational judgment tests like Casper aren't testing content knowledge. In other words, it's not like the MCAT where you need to memorize and recall specific facts. So while you can't study for Casper in the traditional sense, there are ways you can prepare for it. First, test and improve your typing speed. The more words you can type in five minutes, the more thorough your answers will be. Second, review medical ethics. This will help you approach the Casper test scenarios using the right ethical lens. The University of Washington provides an excellent ethics overview. There's a link in the description box below. How to approach Casper practice scenarios and questions. Now we'll go over three practice Casper scenarios, two video-based and one word-based. For the video scenarios, go ahead and watch the clip, then pause the video once the questions appear on the screen. Set a timer for five minutes and do your best to answer the questions. As soon as the time goes off, stop typing immediately. Then continue playing this video to see how your answer compares with ours. Have you identified the same ethical and professional issues? Don't expect our answers to perfectly match. This exercise is meant to help you get better at recognizing the key components in each scenario. All right, let's go. <clears throat> Do you see that? What? Two rows down. I think Lawrence is cheating. I can't believe it. He totally is. I can see him looking off Sarah's exam and copying her answers. Well, this is the hardest class of the year. He's probably worried about keeping his grades up for med school applications. Yeah, but this is anatomy. Shouldn't we actually know this material if there we're gonna be doctors? I mean, I sure think so, but I don't know if I wanna get involved with Lawrence's business. What about you? What do you think we should do? What about you? What do you think we should do? Question number one, what will you do in this situation? Question number two, imagine you knew the neighbor was knowingly letting your classmate cheat. How would that change your answer? If you were the professor and learned your students had been caught cheating, what would your actions be? Pause the video and start your timer now. How did it go? Five minutes isn't much time, is it? All right, let's look at the key issues presented in this scenario. First, as a pre-med student, you have a duty to uphold the integrity of the medical profession. Doctors should hold themselves to high ethical standards and refuse to take unethical shortcuts. You can't ignore this behavior in someone trying to become a physician. Second, you have a duty to show loyalty and compassion for your classmates, encouraging their personal and moral growth. So how do you balance these conflicting responsibilities? Before we give you our answers, Let's go over the qualities you should demonstrate in your responses. What do you think they should be? We find it important to show commitment to medical ethics as well as empathy towards your classmate. You want to display your professionalism in how you approach this tricky situation. And you'll want to prove your ability to balance multiple perspectives. Now let's look at our answers. Question number one, what would you do in this situation? Here's what we would have written. After the exam ends, I would pull my classmate aside and speak with him in private. I would let him know I saw him cheating on the test and intended to inform the professor. But I changed my mind and wanted to give him the chance to come forward first and admit to the professor he cheated. If my classmate was willing to confess to cheating but was worried about the resulting sanctions, I would offer to help him prepare to plead his case before the academic conduct committee. I would support him in composing and rehearsing a statement and apology. Regardless of the outcome and what sanctions are administered, I would remind him of the importance of honesty and choosing the moral path. What was your response? Did you demonstrate empathy, commitment to ethics, or professionalism? Pause the video to compare our response with your response and think what you wish you could add or subtract to your answer in hindsight. As you can see, this answer demonstrates a commitment to ethics but also compassion and support for the offending classmate and we try to give him a chance to do the right thing by telling the professor himself, allowing him an opportunity for growth. Question number two. Imagine you knew the neighbor was knowingly letting your classmate cheat. How would that change your answer? Here's our response. If the neighbor was complicit in the cheating, I would encourage them both to come forward and admit their actions to the professor. Cheating or allowing a classmate to cheat diminishes the integrity of the medical profession and disrespects the many students who work hard to achieve success honestly. Pause the video to review your response to this question. Again, this answer shows the balance between upholding the medical profession and supporting your classmates. It also shares our opinion on why cheating is harmful to medicine as a whole. Question number three. 
If you were the professor and learned your students had been caught cheating, what would your actions be? Here's our response. I would ask the students to give explanations as to why they cheated. While no mitigating circumstances can excuse cheating, I would want to present comprehensive pictures of the incident and the students to the conduct committee. If the students were remorseful and had previously clean records, I would advocate for a course of discipline emphasizing student growth and learning rather than suspension or expulsion. Casper questions like to put you in someone else's shoes. How did you do acting within this position of authority? Pause the video to evaluate your answer. Our response displays a desire to gather more information before acting. Remember that. Just like a physician gathers additional information before making a diagnosis, you'll want to prove you won't act rashly and potentially miss out on a detail that would have changed your understanding of the situation. This is a strong theme to demonstrate in many of your Casper responses. Casper practice scenario number two, business partner conflict. I've got to talk to you about Dave. What's going on? Well, when the three of us first opened the restaurant together, everything was great, right? Yeah, I thought it was. Me too. But recently, Dave has been acting off. He keeps dropping the ball. What do you mean? Here's one thing. He's supposed to be in charge of talking to our investors, but I just found out he hasn't been doing that at all. One of our investors is actually pulling out because they're tired of being kept in the dark. Who knows who else might be ready to bail? Oh no, that's terrible. I have to admit, I noticed Dave hasn't been following through on some little things and I've been picking up his slack, but I didn't know it was this serious. It is. And this has been going on for months. Now the restaurant's future is at risk. I think we need to force him out of the partnership. What do you think? What do you think? How would you approach your partner about his inconsistent performance? Question number two, imagine your partner shares his mother's health is failing and that's why he's been distracted and failed to follow through on his responsibilities. Would this change your reaction? Question number three, conflict avoidance often causes greater conflict. Do you agree or disagree with this statement? You can pause the video and start typing now. All right, welcome back. So what did you identify as the key issues in this scenario? We recognize conflict resolution as one of the most important components. More specifically, the need to approach conflict with maturity and empathy using strong communication skills to find the resolution. And what qualities do you think are most important to demonstrate in your responses? We identified compassion, a desire for understanding, and the ability to problem solve successfully as the best qualities to display. Did you hit any of those in your answers? Remember, it's okay if we took different approaches or our answers sound different, but you want to be mindful of the qualities you show in your responses. How are you proving that you'll be an effective and ethical physician? All right, let's get into our answers. Question number one, how would you approach your partner about his inconsistent performance? Here's our response. When approaching my partner, my first priority would be to listen, refrain from judging, and fully understand his perspective. If my partner revealed barriers affecting his involvement, I would help him find ways to remove those barriers. If he instead expressed dissatisfactions with the business, I would arrange a partner meeting to speak honestly and search for solutions rather than cast blame. I would consider the possibility of bringing in a third party if discussions became heated or unproductive. I would hope we could find a satisfying solution and move forward as business partners. Take a moment to read over your response and pick out the qualities you demonstrated. Pause the video while you do that. Our answer shows our desire to understand our partner and gain more information before making any decisions. Does that sound familiar? It's the same approach we used for the last scenario because it's important. We also demonstrated our ability to think through and prepare for many possible outcomes. Question number two. Imagine your partner shares his mother's health is failing and that's why he's been distracted and failed to follow through on his responsibilities. Would this change your reaction? Here's our response. I would express my concern for his mother and share my wish that he had told us earlier so we could have supported him. Working with my partners, we would reassign roles and duties. We might consider allowing the partner to take a temporary hiatus from business matters while handling his mother's affairs. A few weeks later, I would follow up with both partners to see how the new arrangement is working and if it needs further refining. Pause the video again to compare our answer with yours. What qualities did you demonstrate in your response? We first showed compassion and empathy, then a desire to find a solution that's agreeable to all parties. 
we identified the importance of clearly establishing expectations with teammates. Can you imagine how difficult your job would be as a physician if your nurses had different expectations of their roles than you did? Establishing expectations is crucial. So is following up later to see if your solution is working well or needs readjustment. Question number three. Conflict avoidance often causes greater conflict. Do you agree or disagree with this statement? Here's our response. I agree that avoiding conflict doesn't erase or solve the problem. In most cases, it only makes things worse. Only by handling conflict maturely and empathetically can we understand another person's perspective and find common ground leading to an agreeable solution for both parties. If the conflict is avoided, resentment festers and eventually ruins the relationship. This question was a little more personal. Was it more difficult to share your own opinions and values than solve problems for the characters? Go ahead and pause the video to examine your response. Our answer displays an appropriate and professional understanding of conflict. As a future doctor, you're bound to experience conflict with colleagues or even with patients. It's important to prove you're not afraid of handling conflict and have the ability to approach it in a mature way. Casper practice scenario number three, quote about being a physician. We want to give you an example of a word-based scenario. You'll likely come across a single quote as the source for one of your Casper sections, given without context. Some students actually find these harder to answer since you're not giving characters or a narrative to respond to. So let's give it a try. Observation, reason, human understanding, courage. These make the physician. Martin H. Fisher. Question number one. What does this quote mean to you? Question number two. Discuss the importance of courage in medicine. Question number three. Describe a time in your life when you had to make a courageous decision. What did you learn from the experience? Pause the video and spend five minutes answering these questions. This scenario is quite different from the others. How did you do? Did you find it harder or easier? These questions allow you to get personal and share your experience in the medical field, whether it was from working, volunteering, shadowing, or being a patient yourself. Since these questions are more subjective, the important thing here is to demonstrate your understanding of a physician's role and what it takes to be an excellent doctor. Question number one, what does this quote mean to you? Here's our response. This quote reminds me that being a doctor requires more than knowledge and logic. We learn to observe symptoms and use reason to make diagnoses, but that's only half the work. We need to build relationships with patients based on human understanding so they trust us when we recommend a medical course of action. And we need the courage to act morally and ethically when situations become ambiguous or difficult. A physician missing any one of these traits would be ineffective. This quote will mean something slightly different to everyone. How does your answer address the quote and represent the role of a physician? Pause the video to consider your response. Our answer highlights the importance of compassion, empathy, and ethics for a physician. Remember, these are a few of the primary qualities the CASPER test is measuring, so you want to take every opportunity to include them in your answers. Question number two. Discuss the importance of courage in medicine. Here's our response. A physician's courage is called upon every day. It takes courage to inform a patient or their family of bad news. It takes courage to answer hard questions with honesty. Courage is needed when performing a difficult or new procedure. It's courageous to adhere to ethical standards when it means questioning an unjust organizational policy. Every medical professional I know regularly displays courage through their actions. Pause the video to review your response compared to others. This answer uses specific examples to show familiarity with a physician's role. You want to call upon your experiences and interactions with doctors when responding to this type of question. Which physicians do you look up to? How do they show courage? There's the material for your answer. Question number three. Describe a time in your life when you had to make a courageous decision. What did you learn from the experience? Here's our response. My parents and I did not see eye to eye on which college I should attend. I had my heart set on an out-of-state school with a strong science program, but they wanted me to stay closer to home. We had many difficult conversations where I listened to their concerns and tried to calm their fears. Eventually, they left the decision to me. While I respected their input, I chose the out-of-state school because it offered stronger pre-med options. It was hard to go against my parents' wishes, but I knew it was the right choice and I learned to trust my instincts. What qualities did you demonstrate in your story? Pause the video to identify them. 
It can be hard to think of a personal story on the spot, but the Casper does like to ask these describe a time in your life questions. Be mindful when choosing your story that you don't reveal anything that puts you in a negative light. For example, don't use a story showing you handling stress poorly or struggling to work with others. These qualities would be concerning in a future position. On the other hand, demonstrating strong communication skills and your desire to understand another person's perspective is always a strong approach. If you've enjoyed these three practice scenarios and sample responses, head to our supplementary guide to find several more. A few more practice attempts will get you ready to tackle the Casper with ease. There's a link in the description box below. There you have it. Everything you need to prepare for the Casper test. If you continue practicing using the strategies we've outlined, you'll improve your odds of performing well on the Casper test and making your medical school dreams come true. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. And if you'd like to learn more about the med school admissions process, click the link in the description to get our free comprehensive guide, how to get into medical school. The strategies in the guide are the same ones our team uses to routinely help students get into schools like Johns Hopkins, Mayo, UCSF, and many others. All right, thanks again for watching. See you next time.